Today, we're taking a deep dive into the world of Undercover Boss, where chaos ruled the day. Well, let's get things started with the head honcho of Fast Signs International. So these guys are the biggest custom sign company in the whole of the United States. While undercover, I'm going to be posing as Louise Steely, rocker chick who has a really hard time keeping a job. So this boss decided to head over to Culver City. And guess what job she picked for herself? Yep, she's stepping into the shoes of an installer, even though she's never tried something like it before. So what are you waiting for? Let's buckle up and watch the chaos unfold, shall we? Now here's the kicker. This boss is absolutely blind when it comes to the tools and tricks of the trade. It was almost like she was diving into the deep end without a clue. Hi, I'm Louise and I'm looking for a guy named Gary. What I'm hoping to learn today is how we install our products and how we ensure that they meet our high standards. Things seem to be kicking off on the right foot, but the big question is, will it all go smoothly? Well, I guess it's time to see how it pans out. You see, the guy in charge was probably expecting a male worker. But guess what? Louise threw a curveball and said, hey, women can handle this job too. Surprisingly, he was totally cool with that idea. And before you know it, they rolled up their sleeves and got down to business. Today, well, we're going to apply the decals on this truck. Side, side. I'm going to help with the first one on the, on the door. So this dude was playing coach, showing her how to slap those stickers onto the cars using a squeegee. At first, she was all like, this seems like a piece of cake. I got this. Well, sure, she was nailing the measuring part like a true boss, but soon she hit trouble when she tried to aim at that bubble-free finish. Let's just say the first sticker didn't exactly go off without a hitch. We all have the idea of stickers just peeling and stick, and when it comes to something as a car, you can't just paste it on. Eventually, they managed to find common ground in conversations about family and kids, which was awesome because it helped ease the tension a bit. Now it was time to tackle a mammoth-sized graphic installation. As she was going at it, she started to realize something. This job was no joke when it comes to physical effort and skill. It was not all that easy. And you know what's interesting? Gary had his own two cents to add about the whole situation. Hire Louise. I think Louise might be suited for a job, maybe, um, maybe a desk job, maybe not so hands-on. Well, let's be honest, what Gary said was a bit harsh. He pretty much dropped the bomb that he wouldn't consider hiring her. But hold up, there's a whole lot more to the story. You see, Gary had been through the ringer himself, facing his fair share of uphill battles. On that very same day, he'd been through a pretty rough blow. He'd lost his house. When Louise got wind of all this, she couldn't help but feel a pang of sympathy for the guy. Jump ahead to the moment when she crossed paths with him no longer incognito. I am going to bring you out to Dallas where our corporate office is for a week. Man, Louise truly is a gem of a woman. I mean, she's as sweet as pie. And what makes me say this? Well, turns out she went ahead and hands over a whopping $15,000 to his church. And that gesture hit Gary right in the feels. Like the dude literally broke down in tears. But wait, there's more. She goes all out and surprises him with a car. So I would like to give you a new car. <laughs> Just so we can make that daily trek to the job without a hitch. What's more, she hands him a fat check of $50,000 just to help him get things in order. Talk about a roller coaster. But this next story is an absolute whirlwind. The boss of Wild Wings takes off to Oshawa, Ontario in Season 3, Episode 1. And the situation there was nothing short of chaotic. The store sales had been plummeting, and he was all set to figure out how to turn things around. Angelo? <laughs> how are you? You're late. Once there, he first met up with one of the employees, Sabrina, the head bartender, who gave him a quick tour around the place. But it looks like our man here was prepared to go neck deep in this little sting. Right off the bat, he went about juggling every other job thrown his way, from handling the bartending to managing inventory, and even serving the guests all at once. Meanwhile, Sabrina gave him a little insight about how she was balancing her personal and work life. Turns out, she barely took a day off for herself. But just then, a bunch of customers walk into the door, and the big boss was in for a rude shock. Oh, okay, so when you say specialists buy two pounds, get one free, one person can't eat three pounds a week. Well, this was some bizarre offer that the franchise owner had come up with. Even the customers were left scratching their heads trying to figure out what was going on. You know, we, we, we authorize the promotions, uh, they're done strategically. And yet, this owner who'd been defying every rule handed down by the head office was nowhere to be seen. What's more, apparently he'd often unleash his fair share of yelling and screaming at poor Sabrina. There's been times we fought. I've had him scream and yell at me and tell him he could find someone better. Really? 
This lady's just trying to make ends meet for her children, and has even faced the crushing experience of going bankrupt, and threatening someone who was doing their job right is definitely a red flag. And just like he guessed, when the big boss returned after a brief break, he caught wind that Sabrina was being chewed out by the owner behind closed doors. It is then that he decided to step up and take matters into his own hands. You go up there and you apologize. Sorry, Sabrina. You can on me, you can on me, you can do whatever the hell you want to me. No doubt about it, that unexpected twist caught everyone off guard. But hey, here's the good thing. Things only changed for the better from there on. But when the co-owner of the Chicago Cubs made a decision to go undercover, things went spiraling down pretty quick in Season 2, Episode 17. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make sure the facilities are, are running in the most efficient way possible. You see, our man here had a real determination to roll up his sleeves and put in some serious effort to meet his company's high standards. So, here's the thing. Considering the stadium welcomes a whopping 40,000 folks at every game, you better believe that the whole place, including those bathrooms, need to be spick and span. Alright, now it's time to introduce the fellow who's going to be keeping an eye on how well he's doing his job. Stocking, a couple of bathrooms before the game tomorrow. So. Okay. So, Daryl jumps in to give him a hand with those pipes. While he was juggling a bottle of detergent in one hand, he was wrestling with a hefty pipe in the other. And all the while, he was also hustling to scrub down those bathroom floors. Oh, by the way, there's more to the story. I was super surprised to see that these guys were using their personal cell phones to communicate to each other. Mark had been giving those bathrooms his all, working his tail off. Now, let's see how all that effort pans out for him. This is a very fast process, so it's like this. Okay. It's going to keep moving. If you don't, all this water is going to roll back real fast. Quicker, than, you got to go a little faster than that. Daryl had some specific expectations about the level of energy and effort Mark should be putting in, but unfortunately, Mark wasn't quite hitting that mark. To add to the frustration, he even managed to break something, and that's definitely a downer. Meanwhile, the boss noticed that the locker room was way too cramped for the number of people it serves, and he was taken aback that this issue hadn't been addressed. Slowly but surely, he realized that there was a lot that needed fixing. Now our main man Daryl has been on bathroom duty for a solid 24 years. Talk about dedication. He had this fire in his belly to keep going, mainly thanks to his daughter being a motivating force. And luckily for him, this really struck a chord with Mark, and they connected over it. The story of his daughter was very similar to my daughter's story. They're both eight years old and they both swim. He then opened up about how the extended hours at work were eating into his precious family time, leaving him with less moments to spend with his loved ones. Despite this heartfelt confession, they rolled up their sleeves and went back into the work grind. But hold on to your hats, for here comes the shocker. Daryl's got this gut feeling that Mark just doesn't cut it for the job. I mean, talk about a twist. Who could have seen that coming, especially after all the bonding they shared? Mark is not washroom ready for Wrigley. Probably do good outside or on the fields, something less stressful. Yeah, it's definitely not the nicest move, but get ready because what unfolds next is going to completely surprise you. Oh. All right, man, this, this is it, man. I'm about to let you go. Uh, I know you gave it your best, man, but slow me down, man. Slow you down too much. Yeah, it's nice work with you. Yup, it looks like Mark was just let go by his own employee. Daryl had to step in and clean up after every misstep Mark made. They exchanged a handshake, and that was the end of it. The whole situation was quite a mess right from the start, with our guy clearly struggling to keep up with the workload. But aren't you curious about what happened after the boss finally revealed his true identity? Well, time to dive in and find out. So as an owner of the Cubs, I would like to officially say to you and all those guys, thank you for what you do every day. Thanks, sir. Turns out Daryl was in for a pleasant surprise. Mark had arranged for Daryl's daughter to take swimming lessons with none other than the head coach of the men's swimming team at Northwestern University, a top-notch coach. But hey, isn't that what an undercover boss is all about, to value those who add value to your company? Well, which of these moments is your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more crazy videos. Until next time, signing out.